Hey everybody, welcome back to Sovereign Money. In today's video, we're diving into the world of Bitcoin nodes. I'm going to explain what nodes are, why you should be running one, and how to set it up. I'm also going to demonstrate an actual full node running in the wild. Wow. So whether you're a crypto veteran or just getting started, understanding nodes is a game changer for your Bitcoin journey. Let's dive in. So what actually is a Bitcoin node? Well, this is a Bitcoin node. I have an entire copy of the Bitcoin blockchain from the very first block and every transaction ever recorded on the Bitcoin blockchain on this little hard drive. That's pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to do that for yourself in this video. So what does that mean? So basically, a Bitcoin node is a full copy of the entire Bitcoin blockchain that maintains a connection with other computers running a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain. It's sort of a backup system for the entire Bitcoin network. So Bitcoin nodes have a bunch of very important functions, and I'm gonna list them in no particular order. The first function of Bitcoin nodes is transaction and block validation. A Bitcoin node verifies all transactions and all blocks against Bitcoin consensus rules, ensuring that all the blocks and transactions are valid and follow network protocols. The second function is network relay and propagation. All nodes share new transactions and blocks with other nodes, helping to maintain the network's decentralized structure. And the third function is blockchain storage and serving. Bitcoin nodes store the entire copy of the Bitcoin blockchain and provide data to other nodes and lightweight clients when requested. The fourth main function of nodes is mempool management. The nodes maintain the pool of unconfirmed transactions that the miners choose to put into the blocks. They thereby facilitate transaction propagation and block creation. The fifth function of nodes is consensus rule enforcement. Nodes adhere to and enforce Bitcoin protocol rules, ensuring network-wide agreement on the blockchain state. And the sixth function of nodes is network security enhancement. Because there are so many copies of the blockchain spread around the world, there's increased resilience to attacks through decentralized verification and storage. And the seventh function of Bitcoin nodes is transaction and block filtering. Filtering? Nodes apply filters which allow for efficient data retrieval by lightweight clients while preserving privacy. And the eighth function of nodes is network monitoring and statistics. Nodes provide data on network health, including peer connections, difficulty, and transaction volumes. And the ninth function of Bitcoin nodes, finally, is the optional wallet services they provide. Bitcoin nodes offer built-in wallet functionality for managing your Bitcoin holdings directly from the full node. You can think of a Bitcoin node as your own private Bitcoin blockchain server. So why should you run your own node? Sounds like a lot of work. At the risk of overlisting you, I actually have a list of a few reasons why you should run a Bitcoin node. I'll make it quick. Number one, financial sovereignty. When you run your own Bitcoin node, you're not relying on anyone else to tell you what's going on on the Bitcoin blockchain. You've got a copy of it right there on your desk. Number two, and probably the biggest reason, is enhanced privacy. All of your financial activities are visible on the Bitcoin blockchain. And when you use a third-party Bitcoin server, like you would with any regular hot wallet app, they are privy to all of your transactions. But when you run your own node, all of your transactions are just simply hidden among all the other transactions on the blockchain. Nothing can be attributed to you. Number three, and this is a big one, is network fortification. Every copy of the Bitcoin blockchain makes Bitcoin more resilient to attacks and more decentralized. And that's a good thing. The next reason is educational value. You don't have to worry about that. You can just pay attention to this channel. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. But seriously, running a node is a fantastic way to figure out how Bitcoin works under the hood. Another reason you should run a node is protocol influence. Node operators collectively enforce Bitcoin's rules. And when you run a node, you're basically given a say in the future of the Bitcoin network. And the last reason is you're embracing the Bitcoin ethos. When you run your own Bitcoin node, you embody the don't trust but verify ethos. After all, you're validating all the transactions yourself. Okay, so how do you run your own Bitcoin node? Well, there are a few requirements. First of all, you need some type of computer. 
needed an old Windows computer, an old Mac computer, or you can even use a Raspberry Pi if you like, or a Linux computer. It does not have to be a really robust piece of hardware. It just needs to be relatively modern. In my case, I run a full node off this laptop that I'm recording this video on, on an external hard drive, which I showed you, and that's it. Pretty simple. The hard drive you're running this Bitcoin node on should be approximately one terabyte in size. Mine is two terabytes for future room because the Bitcoin blockchain is big. I think it's about 600 gigabytes right now. I'm not sure, but you need a big hard drive space. So preferably a separate computer that you're not using for other things, or if you have an extra drive that you could set aside for the Bitcoin blockchain, that would be ideal. I found two terabyte NVMe SSDs on Amazon for about 90 to a hundred dollars and enclosures for them like this for about $16. Crazy. So you can basically run your own node outside the main hard drive of your computer for about a hundred, hundred and ten dollars USD. And the last thing you need obviously is a connection to the internet. The faster the better and it needs to be stable. Once you've met all those requirements, then it's time to download the software. And you can do that from several places. You can just Google Bitcoin Core software, or I have a few links for you. One is here. Here we are on Bitcoin.org, and I'm at the download page, but this is the homepage here, Bitcoin.org forward slash Bitcoin dash core. I'll put the link in, down below. And right now they are functioning on version 27. You just click this link up here, download, go to the download page and select the appropriate download for your platform. Make sure you verify the download. I did, everything went fine. And there's another option for downloading the software. And that is at bitcoincore.org forward slash download and this is the download button there's the page we're on bitcoin core and you can download it here it detects the hardware you're using if this is the computer you're going to you're going to be running it on but you can use linux 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 another linux mac or windows of course i'm running this one right now i'll show you that in a minute and when i did that i did verify the download everything went fine so the instructions are super easy to verify the download so don't be afraid to do that. Just gives you some peace of mind. After you download, you install the program just like any other program, and then you launch it. Now, there's two main ways to run a Bitcoin node. All Bitcoin nodes have outgoing connections to other nodes, pulling in data from those nodes to sync their copy of the Bitcoin blockchain. The other way is you can have those outgoing connections and you can allow for incoming connections. That makes things a little trickier because they have to get through your router to your computer itself. And there might be some firewall issues and you might have to adjust some settings in your router in order to allow that. Basically, you have to allow incoming connections on port 8333. So you might have to dig into your router, or get under the hood, get a little greasy, figure that out in order to allow the incoming connections if they don't happen automatically. And I'm gonna show you how to check that. Speaking of incoming connections, you can verify whether you have incoming connections and outgoing or simply just outgoing. All Bitcoin core nodes that run have outgoing connections, but you're not supporting the network unless you're sharing data with other nodes. If you're just taking data from other nodes without giving it back, then you're not really supporting the network. You're kind of a parasitic relationship. You're not killing it, but you're just pulling data off of it. It's not terrible. It's not bad. It's just not supporting the network. So ideally, you would allow for incoming connections. In order to verify those, you need to head over to bitnodes.io. This is bitnodes.io. Right now, it says there are 18,685 nodes running around the world. And this little map shows where they're located. I don't know if I can zoom. Yes, I can zoom in a little bit here. Here's the U.S., all over the U.S. Not too many in South America. Uh, Africa is underrepresented. Come on, Africa. There's even some in Reykjavik, all over Europe, Northern Europe, and a few in India. A lot of space in Russia to be taken up by Bitcoin nodes. Japan, representing South Korea. North Korea really needs to up their game. I don't know what's going on there. And Australia's in the game, New Zealand, all good. So 
18,685 nodes are running right now around the world. If you scroll down a little farther, now my node is not running right now, but what you do is you click this button and it will check the node. I'm gonna go ahead and start my node right here. You can see Bitcoin Core version 28 and it's loading. Okay, this is the main window and it has 31 blocks left to sync before it is in sync with the rest of the nodes around the world or up to the latest block, uh, the most recent block. And right down here, right here, it shows you that it's connecting. But I wanted to start that and show you how to check this it should come up green, and there it is. This is the node, it is connected, and we are allowing incoming connections, so I am supporting the Bitcoin blockchain. If this is pink, this little bar area, if the, it remains pink, then you're not connected in a way that allows incoming connections. It's okay, they just you're just not supporting the network. Okay, back to Bitcoin Core. Before I get to the application itself, I'll give you a walkthrough and I'll show you some functionality of it. I need to tell you that when you launch your Bitcoin node for the first time, you need to do an initial blockchain download. You need to download 600 gigabytes of data at once. It's going to take some time. It could take a week. It could take more than a week. And if you have a, for some reason, you have a internet connection plan that limits your data, you have to make sure that you have enough data to allow for downloading that type of volume, okay? Most internet connections are unlimited data. Hopefully that's the case with you as well. But not only are you downloading those 600 gigabytes of data, the software needs to go through all that data and verify all the transactions to make sure they're accurate and compare them with other nodes around the world. And also, remember, a node is only valuable when it's online. So if there's a way that you could connect a Raspberry Pi or an older computer or leave your computer running, that's the best scenario for running a node. There is wear and tear on your hard drive, so you're just going to have to consider the options when you decide what to do. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the software in more detail. Here we are in the Bitcoin Core, basically home page, so to speak. And your wallets are over here. I have a Cormorant wallet, which means that I'm connected to the Sparrow wallet. I have one called BTC wallet. And I'll show you the wallet functionality of this software in another video, actually. So... Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that one. And I'll give you a little tour around the software. So we have overview, balances should be zero. That's not on the blockchain, that's your wallet. Because there's two wallets, well, there's three wallets on mine. But basically, the software comes with one wallet called Bitcoin Core Wallet. And you can send Bitcoin, receive Bitcoin, and then the transactions that you've made from the wallet are available here. But the really interesting stuff is down here. Show peers tab. Disable network activity. I don't want to do that. This is the peers tab. These are all the peers that are connected to my node. These are inbound peers and they, these are outbound. The outbound peers or the outbound connections are limited to 10. Inbound, I've had as many as 25 or more inbound connections. So I'm sharing my copy of the Bitcoin blockchain with these other nodes around the world and nodes drop off, nodes restart all the time on both outbound and inbound. What are the other tabs in this window? We've got information where we have the version of the client we're running and a whole bunch of other information about the software. Then we have a console button. I'll get back to this in a second. It's how you interact with the software and a really neat network traffic window. So I'm going to shorten this down to five minutes. And basically, it shows you the data coming out, being shared, and the data coming in. So I synced with the network. So I received a bunch of data from all the other nodes around the world. I haven't sent much because I haven't been online very long for this demonstration. But the sent data amount will rise and rise and rise and rise the longer you're connected. All right, I'm going to close this Nope, I'm going to go back to the main window. And like any other application on your computer, it has a menu at the top left, a file menu, settings, window, and help menu, at least on the Mac it does. And in those menus, there are options to create wallets, backup wallets, etc., and sign messages and things like that. I'll show you that in a different video. And you can encrypt the wallet as well. 
let's go ahead and head back to that console I showed you and dig into some functionality of Bitcoin node. Okay, here we are back at the console and down here is where you enter a command. So I'm going to enter some commands that I think are pretty cool and show you how they work. There it is. Now this takes a while to execute because basically it's going through the entire Bitcoin blockchain and counting the number of Bitcoin that have been produced by the miners to the very second that I made that request. That's pretty cool. And I'll be back when this command finishes executing. All right, it finally finished. Boy, that took a few minutes. Here is what it returned. It doesn't seem like that would have taken a few minutes, but it's calculating the current block height, the transaction outputs, I think. Not sure what that is. Not sure what best block is. This is all above my pay grade for the most part, but... This is the most important thing here. 19,768,127.365 Bitcoin have been produced and are functioning, moving around on the blockchain. Pretty cool. And I'm not sure if this transaction number is the number of transactions that are unconfirmed. No. 128 million? That might be the total number of transactions on the blockchain, actually. Possible. And I'm not sure what the disk size is either. If any of you guys know this stuff, put it in the comments below for me. Thank you. All right, another really interesting command you can put into the console is get blockchain info. Let's check that out. That was quick. All right, this command gives you the latest block, the best block hash, the difficulty. This is the hash difficulty, which is insanely high. This is the time, and I'm not sure how that is translated, but I see that consistently on all these commands. This is not a pruned blockchain on my hard drive. This is the entire blockchain. When you install the software, you can select to prune the blockchain and have a shorter version installed and take up less room. That way you can run it on your regular hard drive if you want, but it is not the entire blockchain. It's just whatever segment you print it to starting from right now backwards and then as time progresses it adds blocks and takes them away from the past all right let's check out another command and that is get network info now this is a picture of the peers that are connected to your network or to your node and it says i have 24 connections 14 of them are in 10 of them are out again the out connections are limited to 10. And it goes through all the connections. And there's also one where you can dive deeper into the peers that are connected to your node as well. And that command is get peer info. And it shows the details of all the peers that are connected to your computer if you're interested in that. If you didn't notice, when you type into this form down here, the word get, it shows you all the commands that begin with that phrase. So there are a ton. And I think if you type help, you get a list of all the commands. Yeah, maybe it's not a complete list. It's a lot of them. So that's another thing uh, special about this console. And a few other commands. You've got get mempool info. Gives you information about the current status of the mempool, which is what the nodes are validating and updating. So there's all the information about the mempool as it sits at the moment. And maybe one more command and that is get new address. So like I said, Bitcoin nodes have wallet functionality. They're really basically a wallet connected to an entire copy of the blockchain. So of course they have addresses associated with them and you can use it as a wallet if you want. If you do that, just a little side note is it does not come with a seed phrase. It only generates private keys, but you can back it up with a file that you have to encrypt and just hide away somewhere on some hard drive. But it generated an address for me. This is a native SegWit, but it can do taproot and all the fun stuff. And that is why and how you should run a Bitcoin node. Remember, running a node isn't about any real significant personal benefits. It's about supporting the Bitcoin blockchain and all the that Bitcoin represents. So don't be intimidated. If you can install a program and leave a computer running, you can run a Bitcoin node. By running a Bitcoin node, you're not just using Bitcoin. You're actively supporting and shaping its future. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to drop your node running experiences or questions in the comments below. And remember, Every node strengthens Bitcoin. Your contribution, no matter how small it seems, makes a difference.
That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.